Hello everybody, thanks for joining us again this week. Today we're going to hear a lecture given by Dr Helen Caldicott, the presenter of this program, to the International Integrative Medical Conference held in Sydney, Australia on the 16th of October 2011. The speech begins with a short introduction and finishes with a couple of questions from the audience. Um, it's great pleasure this morning to start off with a um, very special speaker, someone who I'm sure will be known to everyone, at least by name, if they haven't heard her already talk or haven't belonged to any of the organizations that she's managed to start around the world. Uh, Dr. Helen Caldicott um, has been described as the most influential um, anti-nuclear campaigner in the world. Uh, she's educated, inspired three generations about the medical consequences of nuclear power and nuclear weapons. Uh, she is an Australian paediatrician, a recipient of numerous awards, and co-founder of the Physicians for Social Responsibility, Women's Action for Nuclear Disarmament, and authored at least seven books. So welcome, Helen. We look forward to your talk. Thank you very much for having me, and it's a very opportune time to talk to an Australian audience. I've just come off a four-week speaking tour of the United States, and things are very grim indeed. But we're amongst the grimmest of the nations, and there's no attention being paid to what we're up to. I'm going to walk you through the medical effects of the nuclear fuel cycle from A to Z, uh, and stuff we didn't learn in medical school I'll talk to you about. Uranium, which we have 40% of the world's richest uranium, has two isotopes, 238 and 235. It's only this one that's fissionable, and it's present in 0.7% in our ore. It must be enriched to 3% for use in reactors, above 50%, and you've got bombs. That's why in a country like Iran and many other countries that have uranium enrichment facilities can make bombs. Uranium decays through a series of daughters, one of which is radium, which Madame Curie refined. It's an alpha emitter. I'll go through that in a minute. Calcium analog, it induces osteogenic sarcoma or leukemia. Uh, its half-life is over a thousand years, I can't remember, but you multiply a half-life by 10 or 20 to get its total radiological life. It's around for a long time. Madame Curie died of uh, aplastic anemia. She was so full of radium they had to bury her body isolated from uh, other areas. Um, her daughter died of leukemia as well. She used to walk around with a bit of radium in her pocket and play with it in a lab coat because she was so fascinated by it. Radon is a highly carcinogenic gas, an alpha, and is given off by uh, uranium as men mine all the time. In fact, the National Cancer Institute, I think last week, produced a report to say radon is one of the most carcinogenic materials we know, particularly in smokers because they damage the cilia and it can't be cleaned out of the lung. There's another one called polonium, and if you remember that man Litvinenko who was dropped a little bit of polonium in his tea at Claridge's and he died of acute radiation illness. Do you remember seeing him? His hair fell out and uh, he died of uh, thrombocytopenia and massive hemorrhage and infection. So this is very dangerous, and that's another daughter. There are many daughters of uranium. Uranium-238 has a half-life of 4.5 billion years, and this is similarly long. Um, and when men mine uranium, not only do these emitters uh, be extruded from the uranium ore so men can inhale radon, in the past up to 50% of men who have mined uranium have died of lung cancer, they're not educated when they go down into Olympic Dam or Ranger. They don't know what the consequences are medically of mining uranium. They can ingest radium, which is very soluble, absorbed from the gut very readily, goes to bone-inducing malignancy. And many of the daughters also emit gamma radiation. So there are four, basically four, four sorts of radiation. There are x-rays. And I must say I'm extremely alarmed that in America now they've got x-ray machines and you have to walk through them. So they're radiating fetuses, which are thousands of times more radiosensitive than adults. One x-ray to the pregnant abdomen doubles the incidence of leukemia in the child. Children are 10 to 20 times more radiosensitive. They're putting children through. I don't go through. I get a whole body pat down. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's very, very serious. Each dose you get adds your risk of getting cancer. It's cumulative. And if I ask Americans, hands up those who've never had an x-ray, 
There might be two hands that go up and I say, what, you've never had your teeth x-rayed? They get their teeth x-rayed every year. Absolutely, totally unnecessary. Um, and we're the biggest irradiators of the public at the moment. And, and, we, and, and it's absolutely definitive that radiation, ionising radiation, is a carcinogen. Then there's gamma radiation given off by these materials and various others I'll describe. Same as x-rays, you don't become radioactive. It just passes through you and mutates genes at the moment you're irradiated. Alpha radiation, which these materials uh, emit, is particulate. It's composed of two protons and two neutrons emitted from an unstable atom. It doesn't travel far. You can hold uranium or plutonium in your hand and it doesn't penetrate the dead layers of epidermis to damage living cells. However, if you inhale uh, radon, for instance, um, it lands in a terminal bronchus, and the alpha particle travels a tiny distance, um, and it's terribly mutagenic. Most cells within that area, that volume, die, but as radiation decreases with the square of the distance on the periphery, some cells remain viable and become mutated. I was an expert witness in Karen Silkwood's trial. Do you remember Karen Silkwood, who was driving to the New York Times with data about plutonium and really aberrant practices at the plant? I saw her liver and heard the slide of the liver was just full of these tiny little stars, full of plutonium. And what the nuclear industry does, and they lie consistently, is they take a dose, say, from radium or plutonium in that tiny area, and they average that dose out of, over both lung fields and say the dose is minimal. So they don't understand radiobiology, um, and, uh, or else they lie. And they actually, i found, they lie consistently. If we lied in medicine, we'd be deregistered. It's inappropriate to lie today with science destroying the planet as it is, and we all know about that. Beta radiation is emitted too from an unstable atom, travels further. It's smaller, but it does the same thing. It mutates genes. Now, I don't have to walk you through <laughs> mutagenesis and carcinogenesis, do I? That the incubation time for cancer is 5 to 60 years. Actually, it may be 2 to 70 years. And that's the ace up the sleeve of the industry because I can't tell you how many journalists have said to me at the moment, well, no one's died from Fukushima. And they don't understand that people just don't drop dead. In fact, one man the other day, one of the workers, and there are 60,000 workers who've been handling these dreadful accidents at Fukushima, died of leukemia. One died of a heart attack. Heart attacks can be induced by radiation, and another one died. But you have to wait a while to die of acute radiation sickness, and we don't know. A lot of the workers, they have a transient. They come in and out. They're called nuclear sponges. Uh, and they, they're working in extremely high radiation levels. However, for the general population, the latent period of carcinogenesis is a long time, and no cancer identifies its origin. So when it arises, it doesn't say, I was made by some strontium-90 that passed through your milk when you were lactating and your baby drank it, um, you know, from a Hershey's milk kiss. Why? Hershey's chocolates is 13 miles from Three Mile Island, and Three Mile Island had a massive meltdown, huge amounts of radiation escaped. And I described Three Mile Island meltdown in this uh, book, and I got documents from a whistleblower from the Hershey's labs describing how they powdered the milk for six weeks until the I-131 decayed away to nothing, um, and then they used it for the milk. But I-131 wasn't the only isotope that got out. Huge amounts of other isotopes got out, which I'll describe in a minute. So radiation is cryptogenic. And it's a silent killer. And, you know, we worry about tobacco. Well, tobacco only kills the smoker. Yeah, passive smoking is bad, too, for babies. But this industry will induce malignancy, genetic disease, chromosomal aberrations for the rest of time. So this is the greatest public health hazard the world will ever see. And we are responsible for exporting uranium. We won't have nuclear power here because it's too dangerous for us. Notice what the politicians say. We just export the joys of a carcinogenic industry to the rest of the world. The uranium in the Fukushima reactors, which I'll describe in a minute, is, is Australian uranium. And no one, but no one is talking about it. There is a total lockdown on what is happening at Fukushima, and we're about to build uh, the biggest uranium mine in the world in South Australia, thanks to RAN, who was a disciple of uh, Don Dunson, who had turned in his grave, who knew what RAN was doing. 
So it's really so immoral I can hardly talk about it as a physician. Um, how many patients have I helped to die of cystic fibrosis or children to die of leukemia? Uh, and yet when I talk about this, the industry will say to me, you're being emotional. So my answer is, if I have two parents in my office and I tell them their child has leukemia I get, and they show no emotional reaction, I get them a psychiatrist. It's inappropriate to be unemotional about an industry that will induce hundreds of thousands or well, millions of cases of cancer <coughs> over the rest of time and random compulsory genetic engineering. Because not only are regulatory genes damaged by uh, alpha radiation or beta or the like, and I won't go into that, but you will all understand that. If a regulatory gene is damaged, the cell sits quietly for any time, two to 70 years, and instead of dividing by mitosis in a regulated fashion, it produces trillions of cells. So one alpha particle hitting a single gene in a single cell can kill you. And people don't understand that either. Uh, and you know, we can't stop cancer uh, mostly, and cancer cells are very aggressive, invade blood vessels and lymph vessels. But the most important cells in the body, of course, are the sperm and eggs. And we all carry several hundred genes for disease, diabetes, cystic fibrosis, mostly all recessive, of course, maybe some sex-linked. Um, I've just discovered I'm a carrier for a recessive gene, which really kind of freaks me out. Uh, but I suppose it's not unusual because we all do. But as we increase radiation in the background, we're going to increase the number of deleterious mutations for disease, and there are now 2,600 genetic diseases described. I will say that um, a report from the New York Academy of Sciences uh, has just translated 5,000 articles from Russian, the Russian literature, into English. And the, and um, uh, now over a million people have died from the Chernobyl accident when one stupid man did a stupid experiment in the middle of the night. The reactor exploded. 40% of the European landmass is currently radioactive, will be for hundreds if not thousands of years. I do not eat European food because you can't taste, smell or see isotopes in your food. They're invisible. And when the cancer arises, it does not denote its origin. But people are dying of cardiac disease. There's premature aging in the children. Um, there's a very high incidence of cataracts. Um, there's a high incidence of trisomies, Cri de Shah, uh, Down syndrome, and the like. There are homes full of teratogenitized children like thalidomide. And I will pass this around so you can have a look at these homes. This is absolutely new in the history of medicine, except for thalidomide babies. Uh, and nor chromosomally normal, genetically normal fetus damaged by some plutonium or radiation that got in to kill a cell that's going to form the left arm or the right side of the brain or the like. Um, and there are literally homes full of children like this. Very high incidence of diabetes, of hypothyroidism, of thyroid cancer, uh, leukemia and other cancers. All cancers can be induced by radiation. Um, so I will pass this round. This is only 25 years hence, but this radiation hangs around for thousands of years, and I will, I will now describe the isotopes that are hanging around in Europe. The International Atomic Energy Agency and the WHO, which have a binding agreement to say WHO can't investigate any atomic accidents unless the IAEA says it can, and the IAEA promotes nuclear power all around the world. This is probably the most important document in the history of medicine, and I've never seen a cover-up in medicine like this. First of all, I want to talk about depleted uranium. Hands up those who've heard of depleted uranium. Okay, depleted uranium is uranium-238. It's not depleted of radiation, but it's depleted of 235, which has been removed for use in reactors. Its half-life is 4.5 billion years. It's an alpha emitter. Uh, it's excreted, we used to use it a lot in medicine, <laughs> to our detriment. It's excreted through the kidney, it causes acute nephritis, it causes renal carcinoma, it's excreted in the semen. And America in 19, George I in 1991 used uh, 360 tons of it near a town called Basra in Iraq. 
It's great stuff because it's 1.7 times more dense than lead. So this is used to make anti-tank shells, but other things too. And when it hits a tank, it slices through the tank's armor like a hot knife through butter. But 80% of it's pyrophoric and it bursts into flame.